Hello everyone, and you're with Benjamin Kalmberg from ConsciousZine.com, um, and this is the Fee Flow Infinite Philosophy uh, series. Um, so this is the second one, um, and uh, let's start with a meditation from um, Riza. It's a quick one, so I thought we'll start with that one. I just went surfing, so it'd be good for me um, to do that meditation <clears throat> and um, it's by riser 5 from the Goldring game of enlightenment and abundance um, now I found riser's work um, the Goldring series on YouTube in 2009 and <clears throat> his was by far the most accurate that I've seen out of anyone's like work on these times on the final compression period he even says the final compression period 2007 to 2012 so I mean it's um I was amazed how accurate he was I was doing the tech spirit war I was out there growing uh, cannabis and the Australian Federal Police with it you know they had the tech some nights it was like Terminator one night I remember they spotted me and um, there was just planes flying everywhere and because you know they're looking for your torch in the bush and so that that was very much a tech spirit war because I had the spirit and they had the tech and um, <clears throat> I was empowered by I don't know spirits the times earth all this stuff to do this it wasn't just I was being a delinquent or something um, and I believe in cannabis um, it's got <laughs> miraculous many properties and it's a human endocannabinoid system that's in your body symbiont so I mean it's obviously going to be used a lot in the future <clears throat> I've done a separate uh, YouTube video on that but that's not what this uh, talk is about so I found Riser's work then and it was amazing you know he'd say on the nadir of the fifth night the indigos would do this and rah 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 and it was funny I was doing that now this goes with another thing that this Terence McKenna guy said you know he said about the eschaton um, you can surf the concrescence to the eschaton and I did what he said because um, old mate Terence McKenna he died in two, uh, 2000 12 years before 2012 <clears throat> And so, when I found Riser's work and it was all um, syncing up with my life, I was, you know, just thrown aback and, uh, you know, amazed. And um, so, there's like a hundred, I think there's more, I've ended up downloading them all now and there's many more than a hundred, but I used to tell people there's a hundred ten minute uh, YouTube videos and they're called The Goldring Game of Enlightenment and Abundance. <clears throat> so we're going to start with a meditation from him uh, because it's really good and it's really short as well so I mean in five minutes to heal like that's really awesome um, close your eyes and relax through it and then after I'm going to take you on a screencast I think and we'll go have a look we'll start anyway by having a look on the natural nutritional warriors page in www.consciousazine.com and we're gonna have a look at the vibrational food pyramid um, and it's you know the food pyramid where it says you know the so-and-so at the bottom and certain foods up at the top well this one's a vibrational food pyramid some guys made some health guys made and I thought it's really good so we're gonna have a look at that and first we'll do this meditation Okay, so here's all the gold rings. I've just downloaded them all so I don't have to keep accessing the internet. And you can see there's. Well, actually, let's go down to the bottom and I'll highlight them <clears throat> and we'll um, have a look how many there are. 182 items selected, so there's 182 there. I don't think any are copies, maybe a couple. But um, yeah, so there's a lot of those videos and you can see the sort of uh, names of them. Transformation, Emergence of Light, you know, Activation, Global Light Renaissance, and Time Activation, Higher Resolution, Indigo, the uh, Deep Indigo one there, and Dimensional Breakthrough, and 
Divine Mind and Door to the Golden Age, uh, Divine Golden Keys, and there's all sorts of um, stuff. But it's it's about it's very zeitgeistial. It's very the spirit of the times. And the reason I like them and they're my number one reference still, after like five years now, is because of the um, the amazing uh, visuals. You can see some of the visuals here, you know, you, but they're moving visuals. He's made them in Adobe, I'm pretty sure. See, there's a, a copy. But um, yeah, so there's about 180 of them. And there's Riser there. So he's an, an older guy. And you can just see, like, look, like Andromedan Telepathic Awakening. And he's got it, man. Like, he, he really. Um, it's very complex. It's um, what actually is going on. He says he's an astrologer, but um, yeah, <laughs> when you listen to some of these, you think, wow, you know, you know a lot more than astrology. So yeah, there's there's quite a lot there. Heaven lives in the river of my heart. Healing mission. And it's all about um, you know, I am the indigo he's talking about. The indigo rebels of the eschaton he's talking about. So it's all about enlightenment and abundance. It's called the Goldring Game of Enlightenment Abundance. So let me see, where have I got... <clears throat> where is it? Here. Let's get this full screen.
Now begin to feel the pulsating rhythm of your heart and feel the sensations in your fingers and toes, your legs and torso, and now your head. You realize the light has awakened every cell in your body and you are open, receptive, alert, and focused. Welcome back. As this fades away, listen deep inside, light body wise, for the sound after the sound. And right there at the end, I feel it's like a really high-pitched he, and that's said to be the radio interlecky leaving the body uh, through the anterior fontanelle through your head. Oh, it's a nice one. Okay, so this is the page I was talking about before. I made this entire page again. Okay, so we'll go down to this, um, oh, this is funny, I'm going to McDonald's, okay, I'm going for a cigarette, okay, I'm going to get a drink, okay, I'm going vegan, yeah, but what about protein and calcium, and I heard about this vegan couple who had a baby that died, so basically if you go vegan you kill babies, and, <laughs> love it. It's nice. I'm not vegan. Um, I've actually got a O positive um, blood type and I've looked into eating for your blood type and I need a little bit of lean meat. So I'm not sure if I can ever go fully vegan. I probably will try and I am trying at the moment. Um, like for instance, I've started now because I've just moved place so I had to regrow plants otherwise I probably would be by now but um you know uh, for me it's about substitution <clears throat> I need to um, eat meat and um, that's what it says for my blood type and O negatives even more so I think and um, so for me it's just about substitution what do I need out of there the protein I need the iron and the magnesium and that kind of thing. So then you find that in other foods, you see? So that's substitution. That's what it's about. So that nulls the, the argument, completely nulls that argument against, um, you know, quitting meat. No, you can definitely do it. It's just about substitution. So anyway, let's go right down to the bottom here where this food pyramid is. Oh yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, fruit powers things. So in this, um, they're powering, uh, I think, let's have a quick look. They're powering a device like an iPhone or something with an orange. 
So that's about, you know, this gives me the notion of the life force of food and how, you know, people like David Wolf and the longevity panel type of people and, uh, you know, vitality and longevity talking health people, they always go on about, you know, uh, eating raw food because it's got life force. Now, this will show you. Uh, okay, so they've put LED. So this orange is powering an LED. The, the cool part is that the LED is powered by the orange itself. That's pretty cool. So you can read that in your own time. Let's go down. I've seen other articles on it too. Let's go down to this food pyramid. Here it is. Who's made it? Marcus Patrick. I don't know who he is, but I like the I like it. Um, so here you see, you know, meat or dead flesh, lowest sort of vibration. And then we go up in vibration and you've got, you know, the, the superfoods and medicinals up this end. And obviously, you know, Hippocrates, the, that guy, he said, you know, let thy food be thy medicine. So this is a good chart um, to go off for that type of living. He's written life force here too. You see life force energy. So let's have a good look there. I like what he's called it, you know, animal discharge, <laughs> dead flesh, in the naked light of the truth, indeed. <clears throat> so it just gives you a, a nice idea. <clears throat> And, you know, looking at that article, don't you want to have more life force energy in you? And, and it's not like uh, about just longevity. It's about vitality as well. You know, who wants to live, a, you know, feeling crap for a long time? So, yeah, this is a good one for helping your vitality. Okay. What else is to talk about? I just wanted to show you guys that. Let's see. I like David Wolf. He's he's not bad. You've probably seen him on the NutriBullet ad. <laughs> but um, here's some of his videos. Chaga, Chaga mushroom. A lot of people don't know about that one. It's actually like the king of mushrooms. You know, reishi mushroom is is kind of like the queen, and that's a big file of the mushrooms. There's a lot in there. There's many, many mushrooms, and um, I think he's a good, good guy to follow. And I remember this health, uh, thyroid health program. He shows you um, how he lies actually without a pillow, and he says, you know, a pillow is an addiction. And um, I've, I have since got rid of my pillow. Actually, I was already kind of doing it when I found this video. I was already sometimes sleeping without the pillow, and I've always found that like that sort of made my neck sore and stuff and. I don't know, I couldn't sleep as well. And it's because at 45 degrees, your thyroid will turn off. So he actually sleeps with his legs up and no pillow under his head. And actually a pillow under his bum and stuff too. So he's on like an angle with his head down. So it helps shut shut off the thyroid. And I know so many people with thyroid problems, even my age. I'm only 28. I know, I've heard of girls with it and... You know, uh, I was living with an older lady at the last place I was living and she had a, a major thyroid issue. And I told her about that, but do they listen? <laughs> and that Dr. Robert Kazar, some of his... Okay, sorry, the screencast cut out. So why eat more high vibrational? Well, a lot of um, like starseed indigo girls will say, you know, uh, the dimensions are just uh, different vibrations. And, um, you know, if you, I'm not 100% sure on that. What about the rest of modulation? Um, anyway, so, uh, you know, it will 
get rid of a lot of denseness. I remember Tina um, from the Peace Bunny page here in Kosher Zen. She was saying, I was saying to her one morning or whatever, um, one day, oh, uh, you know, my muscles were a bit sore. And she said, yeah, it's the meat. And she was right. Because I remember that was right. She was helping me transition a lot. Uh, right at the Eschaton, actually. This was right at the end of 2012. And she was helping me, like, eat better and stuff. And I remember, you know, she was right. Because once I started having all these smoothies every day, that was when I was living inside uni, illegally, <laughs> sleeping on the chairs and stuff. That's when I was, like, fully homeless. And, um, yeah, I was fully collapsed into Earth. That's right. I rode the concrescence to the Eschaton. Now, um, yeah, she's right, and um, I noticed it, you know, I started having all these eclectic shakes, which you can see on the Pagan Prerogative page, which is like way down here. Let's go there, actually. Where are you? So there's the Peace Bunny page, that's Tina's page. But, so me and Tina made this Pagan Prerogative page. I thought prerogative was like a uh, mission or something that you had, but apparently it means a class. So like pagan class of people. Um, so yeah, we made this page together and um, if it will go down. So here you can see all the shakes that I was having. Let's go down. Yeah, <laughs> what I call it, the shamanistic witchery ultra di ultra drinks. <laughs> and so once I started having these, and you can see what was in here. Look, this was just some random recipes from a few days of um, doing this. I had things like foxnut, rhizomes, chia seeds, Himalaya rock salt, turmeric, cinnamon, oranges and banana base for that one. And, yeah, I was just really putting in whatever I had, and you can see there, there's a lot of different dried lily bulb, and <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff going on. I had raw chocolate and from Nimburn, it was awesome. And I really felt more vibrant. Now, I felt less dense, and in that feeling less dense, the sort of starseed girls will say, oh, you'll, um, you know, you'll be able to contact spirits better or something you know you'll um you'll be able to interdimensionally travel better and i would pretty much agree um but yeah i don't know i don't really want to back that too much i have a problem with it but we're not going to go into that anyway so yeah it will it's let's just keep it very grounded it will you know it'll make you feel better it'll make you more vit vital You'll, you'll feel more vital, like uh, you'll feel more energy, your vitality will just rocket, you, <laughs> you know, you, you won't feel downtrodden, you won't have as bad, like, wake-ups, um, you'll have more energy, and rah, rah, And actually, it will unblock your third eye a lot. It will allow that single stream of light that is the third eye to really um, be more powerful. So, just like I always say that, you know, the psychedelic plant hallucinogens and fungi hallucinogens are um, good for, you know, increasing your shaman power, so is eating high vibrational food and, you know, putting uh, essential oils on the top of your head. I remember Tina was telling me, put, you know, three drops of uh, rose oil or um, lavender right on that soft spot on your head right near the anterior fontanelle where your radio intellect leaves and that definitely it all helps and you know she was saying you could even put a drop on your tongue and stuff you know it definitely helps um, I haven't been able to do that because I haven't um, got enough money to buy essential oils at the moment and here's also an eclectic Chinese medicine herbals post that I started making uh, it's got a whole lot of random stuff some stuff you probably haven't heard of. Um, so yeah, you can see that. So 
So that's a pantheistic notion. Oh, yeah, I even put that. So panthea, pantheism is like the larger, more encompassing paganism. And that's me, I wrote that. So pantheism is like um, the view that, you know, the whole universe sort of um, is God. And, you know, it's like, you even have some uh, astrophysicists who will say, you know, I think the physical universe is God's body. It's kind of that notion that, you know, nature is God, basically. Um, so, yeah, this is a pretty cool page. Some info and just some cool stuff. Well, I really like that talk, Techno Pagans at the End of History. It's uh, eight hours by Terence McKenna and I think Mark Pesquet. But yeah, that was really good. Um, that was one of the first ones I listened to of his. And he talks about internet. We get the... Here. When we get the kind of internet we really want, we will have no internet at all. Definitely. So yeah. Here's just another page for you to have a look at. Uh, I think Tina made all this section. Haven't really looked at it closely, actually. Interesting. Thanks, Tina. Mm, okay. Have to have another look at that. So yeah, there's just another page for you to look into, and um, we are penetrating matter here. This is peeling ontological layers. That's a nice picture. So, so we've been talking a lot about etiology and ontology. Etiology is sort of like the uh, looking into causalities and that kind of thing. And ontology is kind of um, the relationship you have to nature. And um, so when I say we're peeling ontology, we're doing just that. We're peeling, you know, uh, relational um, constructs. For instance, when I said the, if you eat higher vibrational food, you might indeed uh, be more in contact with the spirit realm, so to speak. That's definitely peeling ontology. And you can peel ontology yourself by doing it and not just listening to me. So what, what else can we talk about here? There's lots to talk about. Hmm. Uh, okay, so recently I've been telling people about um, neuro, the neuroscience and free will stuff that I found. So let's go to this page. I also completely made this page. It's right down the bottom. Let's look through the page a bit then, so you guys can see what it's all, like all about and what it's got on there. So after I f actually I found this picture after the next morning, uh, before I found this picture, I actually had a revelation the night before. Yeah, just the night before. This is the power of my synchronicity. It's always like this. Um, and I was thinking that I think maybe intuition is a cerebral cortex um, function. Density, the density of connection in the cerebral cortex, remember, is like more than the stars in the Milky Way. So what are the chances that intuition is actually a cerebral cortex uh, function? So anyway, it's just one postulating thing I've been postulating. <laughs> That's what I posit. So there's a lot of stuff here about neuroscience. Lucid dreaming, pineal, ADHD, brain waves, perception. Now, um, let's go down to the bottom. There's some really good um, things to read on here. 
And of course the sun influences consciousness. I also have a YouTube video uh, series which I'm only up to number two on which is Solar Consciousness 1 and 2 videos in the Conscious Zine YouTube playlist. There's more Gold Ring. The Breath of Fire and Light. Actually we might play that next after this uh, screencast is over in the next screencast and end it on that. Because if I remember correctly I like that a lot. It's something about, uh, I remember I liked in there, it was really apt for me at the time because my breath was out of whack at the Eschaton when I was living in uni. It was very stressful and um, the back of my head would hurt and he actually says in here something about that means the breath is not uh, synced with the incoming energy at the back, at the ponds and at the back of the head and stuff. So we'll listen to that in a minute. Anyway, let's go down to the bottom here. Oh yeah, and there's the monkeys learning stuff. <laughs> Let's go down to the bottom. Um, where is it? Is this it? No. Yeah. Neuroscience vs. Philosophy. Taking aim at free will. Scientists think they can prove that free will is an illusion. Now, I would agree because we're embedded in cycle after cycle, <laughs> you know. Uh, philosophers are urging them to think again. Well, not me, and I'm a philosopher. I agree with you guys. Uh, the, conscious, the conscious decision to push the button was made about a second before the actual act, but the team discovered that a pattern of brain activity seemed to predict that decision by as many as seven seconds Oh, sorry, discovered that a pattern of brain activity seemed to predict that decision of pressing the button by as many as seven seconds. Wow. So, as I say, you know, we are being pulled from the future via the light body. So obviously the light body will fire off first, if you will, and then, you know, your brain, and then, you know, it, it makes its way through your nervous system and you'll actually do the pressing of the button or whatever. Now here's me, there is no free ego will, Benjamin Kalberg, that's me, and I'll stake my whole career on that for sure. You're a conduit. So yeah, you can look into those articles. You know, during this series we'll press a lot of these links on all these pages. This, I'm not just going to fly over everything. It is called the fee flow, remember? So if you look at the fee spiral, this is probably, I'm guessing, how this whole series will end up, like a, a spiraling out effect. I would not be surprised. That's the nature of my synchronicity. So you're a dirigible. So also, if you eat more high vibrational food and you're, and you're feeling more, uh, you know, not just you're going to live longer in longevity, and it's about um, having more vitality, um, you know, obviously this will happen more often. More often, you'll have more positive frequencies um, activating uh, more of your so-called junk DNA. <laughs> Here's the kicker, your brain can tell the difference if you say or do something negative to yourself or to others as your brain sees you two as one being. So when you say or do something negative to others, your body still feels the effects of stress, anxiety and paranoia as if you did it to yourself. <clears throat> so here's the clincher. Why eat, you know, uh, more high vibrational food is because, you know, remember I was just saying uh, I think we're pulled from the future via the light body. You know, what you see with your eyes and that light is the past. We're talking about the inner light in the light body, the immortal body. Now, organic portals don't have this. Sold humans have that. They're in the upper macabre, the upper triangle. And um, so you're pulled from the future. And that's why the organic portals don't have visions. <laughs> they don't have the visions. 
and um, of the third eye. That's why I was pointing at my third eye. And so th here's the clincher. If, if you're more clear, obviously you're going to be more receptive, open and receptive, like the end of Rise's video said. You can feel that the light has awakened every cell in your body, and you are clear, open, and receptive. Now, that meditation is very helpful for that. If you do that a couple of times over, you'll feel it. But what I'm saying about the food, and that the clincher is, you will uh, be more receptive and stuff if you're eating more high vibrational food and less dead flesh and meat and dairy and stuff. So I still occasionally eat cheese, I still occasionally eat red meat. So what I've done is I've quit the crap meats that I don't need, like chicken. The fuck do I need chicken for? Like protein, that's it. Um, you know, it's, I don't think chicken has iron and stuff in it, does it? Anyway, it's not exactly nutritious, it's mainly for protein that you eat chicken. So I quit all that type of meat, the, the white meats and stuff. So if I do have meat now, it might be once a fortnight. Remember, I'm an O positive blood type. And so I'm actually traveling really well with this. And um, so, yeah, my first step was to quit the crap meats that I don't actually need at all. I can replace the protein with eggs or something, you know, a lot of stuff. And um, so the clincher is if you're eating more high, vib high vibrational food, you will definitely have more connection to the spirit realm, so to speak, the light body. You will be more open and receptive. And it's like you lay back and unfold. That's how I um, would describe it. Open, clear, and receptive, and your aura will push out and you'll uh, definitely have m more aura and less holes in your aura. You know, NASA has a machine and there's other machines out there like the GDV camera by Kuratov, that Russian scientist, that can actually, they can put the camera on you and see mineral deficiencies just from like a hole in your aura or something just from your aura. And so the clincher is, if you eat more high vibrational food and stuff, you're going to be more clear and receptive. You're going to pick up on, I don't know, t telepathic uh, stuff better, telesentient language. You'll hear people through your light body. Um, you know, you'll sense their energy more than listen to anything coming out of their mouth or their facial expressions. That stuff means little to me. Um, I, like you saw on the neuroscientist page there, there was that top post up the top saying something about um, you can tell more from somebody's energy than their words, you know. So that's the clincher. If you eat better, you will become more receptive, open and clear. And I describe it as a falling backwards, inside, backwards, and a unfolding. So, um... It's great reason to um, eat better, um, if no, if not just for your body temple's health. This is your temple, you know. Uh, this is where I go to temple every Sunday. <laughs> I don't go to any church. God doesn't give a rat's ass if you go to church. You people are tripping balls, <laughs> absolute nincompoops. Uh, you honor God. <laughs> Describe to what show me your philosophy of God. <laughs> you know, we all have crooked lines written in our books of life. So, you know, I'm sure you do too. And you're not a saint just because you go to church. <laughs> so, um, if you're eating better and stuff, you know, it's really a, 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 a thing you can do so that you are clearer and you do pick up uh, messages from Earth and the stars better. Your radio intellect is uh, leaving your anterior fontanelle and such. All this will begin to happen for you and you will realize what I said before with the can you hear the high pitch sound leaving you. It's like a and you feel it sort of zoom off. You will feel all this stuff more. You will be more receptive. So that's the clincher of eating better. And I hope you guys learned something today and we're going to go out with that video I said just before on the um, Neuroscience uh, Mania Man page. The Breath of Fire and Light from the Gold Ring game. And um, 
this is episode two of the Fee Flow Infinite Philosophy series, and I hope you're um, learning something. That's mainly what this is about, because people ask me a load of questions all the time. A lot of people know I'm the site creator of Conscious Zen, and they're always asking me stuff. So this series is really about me explicating and expounding on stuff. So like I've said, we've started in a, in a sort of tight ball, and we're going to spiral out like a fee spiral, I'm guessing. Um, you know, this has all come through me. This wasn't created by the ego of Ben. This, this body is all just for show. <laughs> uh, you know, I haven't come up with this. I'm Earth being expressed, and you know, it's coming through me. So, listen to what it's saying. Uh, I don't really take this as my work. You know, I'm very open, clear, and receptive, and high vibrational. Um, and I was before I ate better, but what I noticed is my body's ability picked up. Um, now I'm lucky because I'm young, and I definitely felt the change. My body's ability picked up when I started eating more of those smoothies like I showed you off the Pagan page. Um, and yeah, I, I felt the difference. It's more like you're floating on a cloud and um, it'll be easier for you to attach to the stream. What stream? Well, there's a universal river flow of light or a vector entropy if you're a bit of a scientist. And this universal flow of light, you know, you can pick up. You can hear the tone of the gold ring, which is the halo, the gold ring around Earth. And remember how I said you haven't awakened? The other day I said this on my Facebook status, sorry, not in this video. I said, you haven't awakened, you ego idiot. Earth has awakened through you. You're just a little cell of Earth, you know. So you can become more receptive and, and feel the rhythms of the time waves and hear the tone of the gold ring. So there's the clincher. Okay, so let's have a look at that video. Here we go. <coughs> no doubt I've got this in that video list. Oh, okay, hold on. Okay, Breath of Fire and Light. Let's see if we can find it. Breath. I'm guessing he's renamed it. No good. Uh, not good. Um, let's see. Breath of Fire and Light. He must have renamed it and taken it down. That's no good. Well, he was talking about in that video, and the only real part I wanted to get it up for was because he was talking about um, the back of the brain there, the cerebellum and the pons and stuff. Um, and if it's hurting there, it means that your breath is not synchronized with the incoming energy. So just loosen your breath and, you know, I don't know, maybe we can look at another video. What do you want to look at? Let's look at one of the indigo ones because they're really complex. The classic revolution one, indigo. So what's indigo? We'll go into that uh, in the next series. Uh, hopefully I'll remember that I said this. But um, I call it in the id go. You know, the id is this concept of a higher self. So it's really the ingression indigo process. Here, this one, let's have a go. Okay, so I don't know why there's no visual.
annoying. <laughs> there we go. So this is about what just happened too. We're still in the midst of it. Uh, so today's date is the 26th of the 6th, 2014. Sword of Illumination. It is sheathed in your body of light. 
the illuminated sword as a central strand, the serpent fire, the magic staff to be commanded for transmutation of the dark to light. You are protected by the gold and silver shield and armor of the light beings. Into battle you march onto the field where blood flows and courage is born. The revolution comes to announce the golden age. Your generation mobilizes in strength to answer the call of terror and the promise of freedom. No longer languish in the shadows or hide in the sight of the old kings. Rise up in passionate defiance to support the victorious spirit of your generation and come to the call of terror. The rebellion against the empire of despots and murderers is waged in the underground. Defeat them from within. Seek the weaknesses in their internal systems and programs. Compromise their defenses and open their security gates to entry. Let the unseen be seen. Reveal them and their treachery. Hide in plain sight, work behind the curtains. Infiltrate the concentric rings and the walls of safety so light may shine and reveal their disarray. You are to revolt covertly work in private. Obtain the keys to the clandestine orders and the secret vaults. The hour has come to collect your powers, to speak in code and program the weapons. The game has begun and the card of revolution is played. The cabal of kings plans the killing of women and children. This is known and was foretold. The mirror reflects your tears and your shame. Angels are flying hard against the western land. The disgrace of their purpose shall not be forgiven until the revolution has ended and the game has been redressed. Pick up your sword of alchemical gold and let the electric blue silver light illuminate the global mind and destiny. In blackness, stay awakened to the galactic calling to bring the Lord of Darkness to the gold. Way showers speak softly as the winds of change blow in the direction of the lighted pathway. Sacred fires burn brightly as the galactic sun shines forth. The indigo purification arrives as the fifth night begins. Peace guys, I hope you enjoyed.